In this example, I want to calculate the work done by a variable force on one dimension. So let's say we have a uh, magnitude of a force in one dimension, x, given by a plus b x squared. <laughs> Not a good b there. Okay, uh, a and b are both uh, positive constants. And we have a particle that's currently at the origin and moving in the negative x direction direction with a speed we'll say v naught okay and we want to know what is the speed at, at for this particle when it is at a location uh, at some later time some later location x equal positive x naught, so some uh, positive x value. Okay, so first, what exactly is going on here? Let's start with a picture because we always do. If I'm in one dimension, here's this positive x-axis and here's a zero. So I have this particle and it's initially at the origin and it has a, a negative velocity. So it starts in the negative x. It's going to go some distance apparently turn around and at some later time be at some position x naught. Does that make sense? Well, my forces I've told are both a and b are positive. Uh, here's x squared. So by looking at the equation for my force, I know my force is always positive, so my force is always going to be acting on my particle in the positive x direction. So I get an idea now of what's happening with the trajectory. It starts at zero, it, it comes down while it decelerates, and then the force turns it around, and at some later position, it's at x naught, and I want to know what the velocity is. Fine. So to do this, I'm going to calculate the net work done on the particle and set that equal to the change in kinetic energy using the work kinetic energy theorem. Work kinetic energy theorem that states for a particle, the net work done on a particle is equal to its change in kinetic energy. Okay, so uh, so we know that the work done on a uh, done by a force, so I just have one force in this case, is equal to the integral along the path of the particle, f dot ds, so if this is the, the vector form of the force, and this is uh, an infinitesimal path element, and then you integrate this along the entire path. Okay, so what does that mean? in this example. Well, the first thing is we're, we're all in one dimension and so uh, it's all the path is all along the x-axis so so ds is, is going to be some uh, infinitesimal dx element along the uh, x-axis as well as the the force is all along the x-axis as well and so the force has some uh, function of x all along the x-axis, and so our f dot ds then just is the product f of x dx. We're in one dimension, so that's simple enough. Okay, and so if I put that in, work here is, is the integral then f of x dx. Uh, the question is now, what are the limits here of, of the integration? How do I integrate along this path? And so here we use the fact that our force is conservative. It's only a function of position, which means the actual path doesn't matter. I can integrate along any path I would like. And so uh, to make this, and the only thing that matters is the the location of the particle at the endpoints. That being the case, then, I'm going to integrate along this path just a straight line between the two endpoints. And so I get the integral of 0 to x naught f of x dx. And so working through the logic of the uh, the definition of work, I've turned the problem into a simple integral of a polynomial, 0 to x naught of a plus bx squared dx. And this is something I can do. I get a, nothing. I'm sorry. Um, 
And so the indefinite integral then of ax plus one third bx cubed, the indefinite integral evaluated zero and x naught is then I straightforward a x naught plus one third b x naught cubed. This is the total or net work done on the particle and the work kinetic energy theorem, since it's a particle, tells us that this is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So the change in kinetic energy then is one half mv final squared minus one half mv initial squared, the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. That's equal to the work which we just found is this expression in terms of a and B and our final position cubed. And so we have a slightly cumbersome algebraic expression, but uh, not too bad. We take this by 2m and then this by 2m to, to cancel those, and then our V uh, final squared minus V initial squared, then 2 over m this term, just do all the steps here, and so then our v final is equal to the square root of the initial squared plus this expression that we calculated from the work. Okay, and so uh, it has a term, it's, it's a, uh, a function of the initial velocity and then as well as the work done between the origin and the final position. Note that if the final position were back at the origin and that's x naught is equal to zero, then our v final uh, was equal to our v initial, it'd just be pointing in the opposite direction, which makes sense.